many people have become hadith proof. Now, you know what hadith proof means? Like waterproof. And that water doesn't penetrate. Now, many people, they accuse others, the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, of giving preference to his own opinion, his own qiyas over a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while they themselves are so much hadith proof that you can give them many, as many hadith as there are, and yet it will not have any effect on them. Like the hadith on, uh, on, on rubbing the hands over one's face after making dua. Now the hadith is there, Imam Tirmizi rahimahullah has brought it in his, in his collection. Imam Abu Dawud rahimahullah has brought a hadith to that effect in his collection. Ibn Majah rahimahullah has brought it in his collection. Musannif Abdul Razak, uh, it's, it's in there as well. Imam Abdul Razak, who was one of the teachers of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, who in turn was one of the shuyukhs of Imam Bukhari. And in Bukhari, there are only about 30 narrations which are known as Thalathiyat. Only about 20 narrations, sorry, which are known as a Thalathiyat, uh, with a chain less than three, with a three links or less. And in, uh, in Musannif Abdul Razak, the compilation of Imam Abdul Razak, there are many hundreds of hadith which are, which are Thalathiyat, with a chain of three links. And uh, Imam Abdul Razak, rahimahullah, was such a muhaddis, uh, when he came to perform Hajj, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, along with Yahya bin Mu'in, had also gone to perform Hajj. And Yahya bin Mu'in, when he heard that Imam Abdul Razak has come to Hajj, he came to Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal and suggested that they go and visit the Imam and listen to his ahadith. But Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahimahullah, you know what reply he gave? He said, I feel ashamed that Imam, that a scholar, a muhaddis of the, of the caliber of Imam Abdul Razak comes here and we take unfair advantage of him and, with, and, uh, and listen to his ahadith. Uh, this is uh, this is not giving him the respect that he deserves. And then after Hajj Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah, he traveled all the way to Sana to listen to hadith from Imam Abdul Razak rahimahullah. And he's also brought a hadith in his collection uh, to the effect about rubbing one's rubbing one's uh, one's uh, one's hand over one's face after dua. Now, some people regard this as a total bidah. And many times you will see people, mashallah, when they make dua, they raise their hands and they supplicate to Allah. And when they want to complete their dua, uh, they don't rub their hands on their face like this, but rather they just sometimes turn their hands upside down or just put their hands down. And, and, uh, and they think that is sunnah. It does not make mention of such a practice in any hadith, whereas on the contrary, it makes ample mention uh, that, that one should rub his hands upon his face after dua. Now dua, uh, as it says in hadith, dua al ibadah. Dua is the gist and cream of all prayer. And in another hadith, it says, dua al ibadah. That dua is ibadah. And as most ibadahs, there is a beginning and an end. When we begin our salat, we begin with takbir and end our salat with taslim. Uh, fasting, we begin our fast with suhoor and end with iftar. We begin Ramadan by sighting the moon and we make Eid by sighting the moon. Uh, we, we, we prepare for Hajj with Ihram and Talbiya and Hajj is brought to a completion by Tawafal Wida. Similarly, Dua is begun with praise to Allah raising one's hand and when one has completed the dua, it's ended by rubbing one's hands on his face. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ recommended, and this is what's been reported in many ahadiths. Uh, as Umar ta'ala, he is reported according to Imam Tirmizi rahimahullah, and Ibn Hajar Asqalani has authenticated it and considered it to be a hasan, a good hadith. Uh, but unfortunately, in many circles, this is considered as totally da'if, and people do the opposite of what is mentioned in hadith. So such people, uh, they call themselves you know, followers of authentic hadith or hadith of the Prophet wasallam. but in fact, they do the opposite to what is mentioned in hadith. And yet they have the nerve to accuse people of the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, who, who used to think that even a da'if hadith is better than no hadith. Uh, people say he used to make qiyas of the wrong type in the wrong place 
But Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, gives a preference to even weak hadith over his own opinion. Because even a weak hadith has relationship with the Prophet Many people they say, well, there's a possibility that the Prophet didn't say it or he didn't do it. Uh, but that's not, what the, that's not what the Quran says either. The Quran does not command us or allow us to reject and condemn Zayf hadiths. As many people do nowadays, uh, when they say, brother, this da'if, da'if, da'if. And the Quran says in Surah Hujarat, Ya ayyuhalladhin amanu, in ja'akum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyanu. When someone who's untrustworthy, not pious, he brings you any news, don't just reject it or accept it. Yes, investigate. He might be telling you the truth. Even every liar doesn't lie all the time. And even liars lie, you know, even liars tell truth some of the time, so there is a possibility it could be true. And when we see, coupled with the practice of many of the people throughout the world, and mashallah, and, and, and in most parts of the world, people do rub their hands upon their faces after the completion of dua. It's not a bidah, it's supported by a hadith, and in any case, and they, the, the, the repetition of the subject matter in so many different hadiths, hadith it supports the fact, and, if, if, uh, and this is usul, a principle, according to the muhaddisun, that when a subject matter is reported in different hadiths, all, although ta individually taken, each hadith might be weak, but collectively, if what they make mention of uh, is a similar subject, then then that subject matter becomes authentic. Uh, a, a common ordinary example of a cloth. A cloth is made up of, very, of individual weak threads. But when they come together, uh, it makes a strong rope or a strong cloth. Uh, similarly, the, if there is a particular issue, subject matter being reported in a hadith, although individually those hadiths might be da'if, but collectively when you put them together, the subject matter then becomes authentic. And likewise, rubbing of the face after the dua, or although even if a person wants to dispute the fact that some of those hadiths are authentic, which it, as, as we mentioned, Ibn Hajr Asqalani, particularly with regards to the hadith mentioned in Tirmidhi on, on Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he says it's a hasan. And Imam Abu Dawud in his, in his Sunan has, has brought two ahadiths with regards to rubbing his, uh, without, with regards to rubbing hands on the face. One he says particularly is da'if, but other one he remains silent upon. And this is accepted among ulama that when Imam Abu Dawud makes mention of a hadith and doesn't, doesn't say anything, criticizes its sunnah, then that sunnah is acceptable. Ibn Imajah similarly has brought a hadith to the effect. Musannif Imam Abdul Razak in his Musannif has also brought a hadith which suggests we should rub our hands on the faces. So to say it's bidah is, is really going a bit too far.